the Financial Survival Network, helping you to survive and thrive in the new economy. This is the Financial Survival Network. Financial Survival Network is presented to you by Regal Assets. Buy and sell physical gold and silver through your existing retirement plan, 100% tax-free with Regal Assets. If you want to include physical gold or silver in your existing IRA or old 401k, request your free investment kit, which was recently featured in the Forbes and Smart Money Wall Street Journal magazines. Call toll-free 855-678-6620, 855-678-6620, or visit regalassets.com. Live at Hard Assets Chicago, Natural Resource Conference. With me now, the mercenary geologist, Mickey Fulk, talking about this. Mickey, welcome back. Thanks a lot, Kerry. Good to be here. Good to be in Chicago. An inaugural Hard Assets show. Inaugural and hopefully the first of many, but one never knows. So what about these metals, Bernanke, Draghi? Do they care about what happens to the world economy, or is it just kick the can down the road and hope for the best? Well, obviously, it's kick the can down the road and hope for the best because they're kind of out of options. What else do they do other than, than massive austerity programs? And, and the mom and pops of the world all the way from Greece to U.S. are not going to put up with that. People aren't going to give away their, their Social Security and their Medicaid and Medicare and, and their 53% of the Americans who get most of their income from the government check aren't going to give that up. So uh, they were caught between a rock and a hard place. Uh, they finally had to do it. I actually thought that Bernanke would wait until after the election to do it, but he surprised it, did, his, did it early. Uh, Draghi came in, what, four or five days before and did it in Europe. So uh, it's all a paper uh, makeover and it's not going to work. We all know that. But but for, for the time being, uh, we increase the price of metals and we have to be happy with that. Yeah, I call it print and pray. They print with abandon. Now we're looking at QE to infinity. In fact, you know, it's every month. He admits that they're buying $40 billion. Who knows what they're really buying because what he said was that from the bonds that are being prepaid that they already own, as well as the interest that they're receiving, it could go up to $85 billion. Just a shell game, care. Yeah, nothing really changes. And who really profits from this, aside from the people that own precious metals, but the banks? Well, the banksters are certainly going to profit. That's the whole idea. And allows them to stash a lot of, a lot more money that they're not going to use. And uh, uh, the people that own precious metals are going to profit. Uh, the people that have all their assets in U.S. dollars in their house are probably not going to profit, especially if, as with most middle-class Americans if they're burdened with debt. But that's why we get out there on the airwaves and try to educate people and let them know that uh, you need to keep a significant portion of earnings and your savings. I would say something order a minimum of 10% in precious metals, specifically physical gold in your physical possession. Couldn't agree with you more, and it's, it's what you and I have been saying now for a couple of years that that really you have to be that the that the forces that be, the powers of, behind the throne here, want this inflation because there is no other way to get it to get through this thing. Not that it's going to work. So we're we going to face the ultimate collapse. Is that what's going to really happen here? Well, I don't know. Uh, ultimately, at some point, uh, it seems logical that that's going to happen. But when that's going to happen, if that's, uh, I don't think that's next week. Is that within six months or a year? I doubt it. Uh, five years, 10 years, 20 years, who knows? You know, there have been people saying this about the American economy and that we're kicking the can down the road for a long time. Uh, uh, I had Doug Casey since 1979. Hadn't happened yet. So my tactic is to put at least 10% of my net worth into physical gold at all times in my physical possession and, and uh, prepare for the worst 
be a Boy Scout, be prepared, and uh, and and hope for something better. Nothing wrong with that philosophy, I don't think. Yeah, and you know, I hear some people say, check out of the economic system, cash in everything, put it into silver, put it into precious metals. But for for you, the average person, you can't just close up shop and divorce yourself from the economic system because until it collapses, it's all we have. Yeah, and I don't know why anybody do that. You know, I don't even, I don't know why some people with the economic system would collapse. That's going to be painful for everybody. Uh, we have a nice lifestyle here in the United States, and it only takes travels to a few third world countries to see how blessed we are. Uh, there's 330 million of us, and there's over 7 billion people in the world, so do the math, we're about one out of every 20 to 25 people in the world. And we're damn lucky, Carrie, to have been born and bred and living in the United States, because to tell you the truth, it doesn't really get any better uh, anywhere in the world than it is here. I wholeheartedly agree. The fear is that because things are being so mismanaged, the monetary system is being so inflated, inflated, and distorted that it's hard to know what anything is really worth anymore because all the markets that we're dealing in are rigged, and so at some point there has to be an end game. Obviously, you know, for those of us who are benefiting, we'd like it to continue on indefinitely, but at some point the, the music's going to stop and somebody's going to be left without a chair. Well, and so if you uh, own some gold, you're probably one of those that doesn't need a chair to sit in. You've got something as your basis. You know, the mar the markets dictate what things are worth. Uh, yeah, markets are manipulated. Get over it. Learn to live with it. Learn how to make money within the manipulation. Uh, what's this worth or what's that worth? Whatever. A, a buyer will give you for it. That's the nature of capitalism. You buy and you sell. For everything that's sold, there has to be a buyer. And there's some sort of negotiation, uh, whether that be a bid and ask on the stock market or you and I sitting across the, the, the table and uh, and I'm bartering rabbits for the chickens you raise, you know? Uh, it, it's... Yeah. <laughs> However it's done, it's, uh, there is value assigned, uh, but I think we're all in agreement here that uh, gold is money, there is no other money, gold has value, everything else is priced in terms of gold, and, and once you understand that, then you probably understand the idea of having a significant portion of your net wealth. Yeah, wholeheartedly agree. I mean, there's so few other choices because everything else has the counterparty risk, and you're hoping that the other guy pays you off when he's supposed to, when the debt is due, when your interest payment's due. But finally, between gold and silver, what's your viewpoint on silver? Is it going to go along with gold? Is it, uh, in some ways, going to outperform it? What's your thinking on it? Well, it's always more volatile than gold. So in a, in a bull run, it will outperform gold. In a bear market, it will underperform gold. It's the nature of the beast. It's a volatile metal, and it's money. Uh, it, it can function as surrogate money at some, at some times because historically it was money. But that's before all these industrial applications came about for silk. Uh, so it's a bipolar metal in times of financial duress and un unease and fear in the world. It will function somewhat as, as money, somewhat as a precious metal. I am personally am more comfortable in owning platinum. Uh, as you well know, I follow the platinum market uh, quite religiously. It's probably one of the few religious things that I have. <laughs> but other than root for the St. Louis Cardinals. <laughs> uh, but platinum has made a big run. It's huge. Uh, we talked at one point this summer, probably in late June, and it, it had been bumping around 13.50 an ounce. I don't know what it closed at today, but it certainly is around.
around 1700 an, an ounce. It was way oversold. We knew that gold silver ratio was way out of whack. And then at one point, down to 0.88. We're still looking at some point it will come back to historic ratio of over one. But it has made tremendous gains uh, and looking better. And a lot of that's again, it's one of these hybrid metals. It has precious metal characteristics. It's ported. It's used in jewelry. But it also has major industrial uses. There has been severe supply disruption in South Africa with strikes, and not only that, but violent strikes, uh, ongoing labor difficulties in South Africa. Most of the platinum world, most of the free world, comes from South Africa. We've got significant platinum in, in Russia and palladium. It's uh, its poorer cousin. Uh, we do produce some platinum and, and more palladium, significant amounts of palladium in the U.S., but we're very much dependent on a, a very geopolitically unstable part of the world, Southern Africa, Zimbabwe, South Africa, for the majority of the world's platinum supply, and that's a concern. Yeah, absolutely, and we called that platinum turnaround twice. Uh, once when it was slightly under 1400 shot up, then it went back down into the mid 1300s, and it went up so quickly, faster than you or I could have ever envisioned. One further metal question, Dr. Copper, what's the view there? Well, certainly Bernanke and Draghi helped the carpet, copper market, at least uh, to the order that it helped the gold market. Plat or, uh, copper was range bound. Uh, 330 to 350 for since the late spring, uh, and as soon as Draghi did his deal, platinum went up to three. Platinum part. We'll have to we'll edit. Yeah, yeah we'll we'll edit. edit. Let me start. There. Um, yeah. Pose the question. Copper. Okay. Uh, what about uh, we've talked about all the metals. The final one, Dr. Copper. Where is that at now? Well, it's a PhD in economics. We saw that. Uh, Draghi came out. Platinum had been range bound for several months uh, since the late spring. Three dollars thirty, three dollars fifty. Mixed signals coming out of China. Falling inventories. Flat prices. Uh, as soon as Draghi did his deal, it popped up to about 350, and then Bernanke followed four or five days later and did his deal at Jackson Hole, and copper shot up to 370. The fundamentals of copper have not improved, but the price certainly has. Uh, the world, although it is not humming along like a switch uh, watch, is doing okay. Uh, the, the inherent copper demand is still good. Uh, Chinese imports are strong. Inventories are down. So uh, I would have to say that I am uh, relatively bullish for copper in the short to midterm. I think it's still going to be range bound. I think we just up up the ante a little bit, and it was range bound in the uh, early part of the year, 350 to 390. I think we're, we're in that realm right now. So, uh, pretty bullish on it. All right, Mick, that makes a lot of sense. I think uh, I think it's looking good. It definitely corrected with the other metals, and I would say it was range bound for quite a while. So, find your sites. Uh, We've got a few of them. Where do we go to? Mercenarygeologist.com, mercenarygeologist.asia. Twitter account is at mercenarygeo. And 24-7 streaming audio, you can hear interviews like the one we just did on mercenarygeologist.fm. All right, and you can always hear our prior interviews. You definitely want to go back look at the platinum discussions we had the last two or three times. They were almost crushing. I don't want to take too much credit. <laughs> FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com. We'll talk to you again soon, Mickey. Thanks a lot. Hey, thanks a lot, Kerry.